Doc Talk, brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, it's great to have you here, uh, Dr. Grissett. And Dr. Gretchen Grissett is joining me today. She is a doctor of veterinary medicine and she works here at the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University over in our food animal mm -hmm. side. And we're gonna talk about urinary obstruction in goats. Yes, sir. And, you know, let's just start out with, you know, what is this? So, urolithiasis as we commonly call it, same thing as bladder stones in humans and people. Um, basically, they're exactly what they are, is they're stones formed of different minerals and concretions and those sorts of things. They end up causing a variety of problems and issues for these guys, but they'll actually um, either obstruct their urethra, so they obstruct their ability to urinate, um, or can cause some other problems. Typically, so the, the ruminant, whenever they were designed, um, right. the anatomy was kind of not exactly sure what they were thinking, but um, <laughs> they have a very narrow urethra and ends up kind of predisposing these guys to getting an obstruction. Um, they're the two main sites, um, in goats and um, sheep mostly, um, they have the urethral process or vermiform appendage that hangs R off of right. the uh, urethra itself on the end of the penis. And you know, when you look at that, that's just a few millimeters in diameter. So um, it wasn't really designed very well whenever God made these creatures. That, right. That's a common sight to obstruct. And then also they, their, their penis has the sigmoid flexure and so it makes this big S-shaped curve that, that's another sight that they'll commonly obstruct out there. Um, but for the most part, it's um, forms from different things that they're eating in their ration, those sorts of things that can cause stones. Um, they can also be on certain pastures that are gonna make them at risk, um, such as calcium oxalate stones, um, you can get on different pastures that have a lot of calcium or, or silicate and have stones of that at that form. But you know, for the most part, it's usually a result of um, what they're eating on their in their diet. So these these uh, two big places that they can. I mean, they're kind of no, two reasons. One, their their anatomy lends itself to stone mm -hmm. formation. But then the diets and the different production practices that we put Correct. these animals Correct. through. You know, we're kind of <laughs> putting them in right. a place where we're going to see these urinary obstruction where they can't urinate or, and, and for people out there, you know, like kidney stones and things like mm -hmm. that and the human side of things can be somewhat similar, but this one's actually stopping urine right. flow. Right, and they can get kidney stones as well. They can actually form there, but probably the most common sites is gonna be on that those two different sites that I mostly talked about. Um, and then you can kind of see it and kind of, as you're saying in the production species, you know, they're, um, these guys, they're, they're feeder lambs or feeder goats, and they're pushing these guys to, to go out to market. Them. Maximum performance. Right, exactly. Not watching the calcium phosphorus dishes. Correct, switches, correct. Like um, that. And then you also have the other scenario where um, goats have become very popular as pets, and they're, they're cute and they're fun to, to play with and feed, and you know, so people can kind of overfeed them and predispose them to these issues as well. <laughs> awesome. Well, this is a great topic. I can't wait to get into more with you. And we're going to be right back with Dr. Gretchen Grissett talking about urinary obstruction in goats. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're really glad that you joined us. Doc Talk, brought to you by Kansas Pork Association, assisting producers and informing consumers. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and I'm joined by Dr. Gretchen Grissett, who's a veterinarian at the Veterinary Health Center here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. We're talking about urinary obstruction in goats and so we've talked about why we have them because of the anatomy and, and the production practices that we put these animals through that can help uh, create these situations. But what are some of the things producers should be looking for as far as obstruction or what are the clinical signs? Okay, so early on in the disease course, you know, you can kind of, they're not really specific signs. Um, you know, the goat just may be off a little bit, a little depressed, a little anorexic, a little off feed, not eating, not coming up to the bunk like you normally would. Um, and then as it further progresses or the animal actually will obstruct, um, they will vocalize quite frequently. Um, and when I say that, it's because they're um, trying to, to strain to urinate, so they're, they're vocalizing quite frequently because it hurts and they can't urinate, their bladder's big, just like us. 
you know, we, we got to go and they can't, so they physically can't. And then you'll also frequently see these individuals, they're posturing to urinate, and you know, they're constantly kind of camped out with their back legs just trying to go and vocalizing. And then from there, it can kind of go several different ways. Okay. So they can be blocked um, and you know, hopefully you catch it at that point in time and you bring it to us. Mm -hmm. And they're just going to be straining and they can't urinate and that's fine. This is an emergency situation? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. As soon as you you notice signs like that, you need to be calling your local veterinarian and be getting on the phone with them. Gotcha. Um, you have one way where you can actually rupture the urethra and that can be anywhere along from inside of the where it's exiting the bladder or anywhere along that pathway. So the ure urethra is from the, the bladder to the end of the penis? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, um, you know, if that happens, typically what will happen is they'll get a lot of swelling on the bottom side of their belly. We call it um, edema. Um, but you'll see it can be kind of mostly on one side. It can go from, you know, their testicles up to their, their sternum or, you know. Is that the old term water belly or? Is, yeah, yeah, kind of yep. get that. Look yeah, kind of. Um, right. But yeah, they'll certainly get a lot of edema, and so mm -hmm. you know, usually when I see that, I think, well, the urethra is ruptured, and there's ways we can go about treating that. Um, then the next scenario would be they can actually rupture their bladder, and then that's kind of where they'll say the water belly term as well okay, too. Yep. Um, and then you know, when you do that, usually they're not vocalizing, but then at that point, these animals are getting very sick. Um, you know, you've got your urine's not supposed to be inside of your abdomen, so right. these guys will will be very depressed if you let this go on for a couple days. Um, once you get to that point, there's things that we can do, but obviously it's, it's not an ideal situation if you have urine in your, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you can also have points where it can, as we mentioned earlier, obstruct in the kidneys or the ureter, which connects the kidney to the bladder. Um, and you can even pop ureters or kidneys and those sorts of things, which is gonna wow. end up with the same scenario. You know, you're gonna have urine in your, in your abdomen and um, suboptimal for the animal for sure. So let me re refresh these. We can have the animal blocked and they're mm -hmm. straining, uh, rupture the urethra, rupture the bladder, or actually rupture the urethra or the mm -hmm. kidney. Correct. So the big thing is is recognize it right. early. Right. And Certainly, the earlier you recognize it, the the better off it's going to be, and the more options that we have to have a successful outcome and treatment. Great. Well, you know, the next place we're going to go then when we come back from break That's is right. <laughs> talk about these treatments and what Dr. Grissett and other local veterinarians would recommend if you have a blocked goat. We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk. We're going to take a break here for a minute and we'll be back. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Gretchen Grissett. And both of us are here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And Dr. Grissett is a DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, over in the Veterinary Health Center. And today we are talking about urinary obstruction in, in goats. And we've talked about the causes. We've talked about the reasons why, some of the things that can happen. We need to get that goat to a veterinarian immediately. So I bring my goat to you. What are we going to do? Well, first and foremost, uh, Dr. Dan, um, probably what I would recommend in any case, in any scenario, is the your veriform appendage or urethral process that I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that um, little part hanging off. Yep. Um, usually we'll amputate that. That's one of the more common spots. Okay. Easy to do, obviously. Um, pretty easy to amputate, but probably your success rate is going to be one in 10. And even if you do do that and it works, they're probably going to reobstruct. So. Okay. You know, first and foremost, I'll, I'll try that. If nothing else, I can at least give the goat some relief pretty quickly and make him a lot happier and a lot more comfortable. And then I kind of base it into to kind of two big categories. You know, if you've got a very valuable um, ram or buck or something of that sort that you're wanting to salvage his ability to breed and those sorts of things, or if it's a, a valued pet and you want to make sure that this animal is going to live and have a nice long life, um, then I'll usually go ahead and recommend a tube cystostomy. So All that's right. a big You're fancy have to word. Tell me. <laughs> Explain that. All right, so that's a big fancy word for basically saying we, we surgically go in mm -hmm. and we place a tube inside of the bladder and then have the urine diverted outside of the body until we can get the stones to acidify that are in the urethra, which is what's allowing the animal to urinate. Um, and then you leave that in there until you can kind of get that problem taken care of, let everything heal up, and then you remove that tube, and then ideally the animal should be able to urinate. Gotcha. So, um, so you're just rerouting the urine until you can break up the stones or the, the obstruction correct, in correct. the urethra and then you 
Correct. Put them back on the... Because most of these stones, you know, they're about the size of sand. Okay. So, you know, it's not like you can just go in there and roto rooter it out, basically. Um, you know, it's gonna, it takes a little bit of time to be able to get those stones to clear um, and do them with the least amount of pain and complication for the animal as well. So what if this is a meat goat? So if this is a meat goat, I'm gonna say, okay, well, let's, let's get them patched up and, let, and let's get them sold. Um, and then that's the case, I'll usually recommend doing something that we call a perineal urethrostomy or a PU. Right. So that basically is a big fancy word for, um, we'll actually basically put a hole in the urethra kind of just below the anus. So, mm -hmm. um, and basically they'll kind of pee like a girl. Okay. So the, we're hoping, and usually it is, the obstruction's gonna be farther down from that and they can you know, urinate out the back end. Gotcha. Now to do this, the urethra is kind of tissue that you, you, you irritate it, make it angry, it's not gonna be very happy about that. So, you know, you wanna get these animals sold because if you try to keep them around, they're gonna have secondary complications such so, as a stricture and those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, if you do this, you can usually save the life of the animal, but it, it's kind of a patch and go kind of process. More of a, a salvage right. uh, meat goat type correct, process correct. Uh, in time to get them to slaughter. Right. Great. Well, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about treatment, and then we're going to get to how you can prevent having urinary obstruction in your goats with Dr. Gretchen Grissett. You're watching Doc Talk, and we're sure glad you joined us. Talk brought to you by Kansas Pork Association, assisting producers and informing consumers. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University with Dr. Gretchen Grissett, who's a veterinarian in the Veterinary Health Center. Sure been nice to have you here today. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> and we're talking about the plugged goat or urinary <laughs> obstruction and happens quite frequently, but there are some things we can do to prevent it, right? Right, there sure are. Um, I guess first and foremost, what I'm gonna talk about is nutrition. So obviously, if you've got a production, production goat herd, you know, you're trying to feed these guys as best as you can and, and get them ready for slaughter. So you're trying to put on that weight and feed efficiency and those sorts of things. Unfortunately, that's kind of the diet that really predisposes these guys to forming stones. Um, so, you know, those high grain rations, that's actually with a lot of phosphorus in them, a lot of magnesium. Those are some of the big players that will um, precipitate stone formation. So automatically putting them on that kind of a ration is gonna make them predisposed to it. Now I understand everybody's not gonna stop doing those sort of production practices and get away right. from that. But you know, there are some things that you can do. You can increase the amount of forage or hay in that ration and that way um, you can increase ruminations and that sort of stuff and kind of provide a different way for phosphorus to be excreted. Um, it's usually, if it's not excreted through the saliva, it's gonna be secreted through urine. So if you can do something to kind of provide a different way for that to be excreted, that's ideal. There's some other things that you can kind of do um, adding ammonium chloride to the ration can sort of help. Um, I think they tend to recommend, you know, half a percent to two percent of the ration to to help those sorts of things. To um, basically, it's a urinary acidifier that will right. help. It, it doesn't make sense to feed something that's kind of basic. Right, right. But it does acidify the urine correct. and helps helps prevent those stones from occurring. Right, correct, correct. Um, so, so there are options like that that you can add to the ration. Um, even just increasing salt in the ration will help out a lot because the more you drink, the more you're going to urinate and you're going to dilute all those little particles like phosphorus and such in your urine. So um, you add some salt to the ration and then right. they drink more. Right. And it'll help kind of dilute things out hopefully and it'll prevent stone formations. Cool. Um, and then obviously if you're in an area that's got, um, you know, silicate pastures or those sorts of things, obviously getting them off of those kind of predisposing pastures would be the um, ideal thing to do. but. That's really not a problem that we're gonna have here in Kansas. And then obviously um, for the kind of the pet goat owners I always kind of touch on is, you know, those guys, they're, they're pets, they're there to look cute. You know, I would feed them mostly a roughage diet. Um, right. And you know, people don't think about snacks. You know, I have people, they're feeding them honey buns and, and those <laughs> sorts of things. But you don't think about it, those, that's sugar. So that's still gonna predispose them to forming stones. So, you know, I do a lot of talking about diet, you know, and people wanna say, well, I feed it strawberries. Okay, still sugars. You know, yeah, right. it's, it's healthy, but you know, it still can potentially be bad for your goat. Um, so, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, um, decreasing a lot of those snacks and treats and being sure that you get kind of goat friendly treats and those sorts of things or at least limit those down a little bit. That's awesome. So. 
<laughs> Don't eat the tin can, right? In the yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here today and spending some time. It was a thank great show. Thank you for show. having me. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to know more about what Dr. Griss and I do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local practitioner. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. You've been watching Doc Talk. We appreciate you watching the show, and I'll see y'all down the road.